Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, today we'll be looking at simple harmonic motion. But before that, if you need a tutor, you can reach us through this number at Global Home Tutors. Thank you very much. So today we want to look at simple harmonic motion. And these are the areas of simple harmonic motion we want to cover in this video. Our objectives are, we want to know what is called a periodic motion. We want to know what is called a periodic motion. Then we want to know what are the properties of a periodic motion. Then we go ahead to what is a simple harmonic motion. Then we look at several bodies in simple harmonic motion. And we look at... Um, Displacement, velocity, and acceleration of a body in simple harmonic motion. So, if we say periodic motion, we have come across the word period, period, period every time. Especially when we have um, our timetable. We call it a um, we, we represent a um, different period of subjects on our timetable. We call it period because if on Monday by 8 a.m. we are having physics class, every Monday by 8 a.m. we will surely be having the physics class. That means it is periodic. So what exactly do we mean by periodic? This is the motion that repeats itself after equal interval of time it's a motion that repeats itself after every equal interval of time let's say it moves from a let's say it moves from a to b in one second then in the next seconds, it move back from B to A. That's two seconds. In the next seconds, it move from A to B back. If you have this kind of motion that keep repeating itself at equal interval of time, that keep repeating itself after equal interval of time, then we say it is simple. Then we say it is periodic motion. We say the motion is periodic. Now, every periodic motion has three basic properties. When a motion is periodic, we have these three properties that we must know about it, which is uh, the frequency. The frequency, if every periodic motion must have frequency. Period. Every periodic motion must have a period. Amplitude. Every periodic motion must have an amplitude. Let's say for example now, the earth is moving, is revolving around the sun. And every 365 days, we have the earth starting all over again, that is repeating its motion around the sun. That is periodic motion. Now every 365 days, it repeats its motion. Another 365 days, it repeats its motion. We call it periodic motion. That is why it is possible to find the frequency of the earth. It is possible to find the period of rotation of the earth. Now, let's now look at what we mean by frequency, period, and amplitude. The time taken to complete a cycle is called a period. The time taken to complete a cycle is called period. If body A move, if a body move from point A to point B, a body move from point A to point B, and then get back to what? point A. 
it starts the motion from A. When it gets back to A, we call it a cycle. A cycle, one oscillation. So the time taken to do this, to go to and fro, the time taken to go back and forth is called the period. Now, the frequency, number of cycles made per unit time. Number of cycles made per unit time. Like if we, if a body, uh, let's say a body in a circular motion make 10 cycles, in two seconds make 10 circle in two seconds then it's going to be 10 in two seconds 10 circle in two seconds so it's going to be 10 over 2 uh, that's going to be 5 circle per seconds which we call hats 5 circle per second which we call the hats so that is the what the frequency the number of cycle covered in one sec one second because 10 cycle in two seconds means it is five cycle in one seconds or five revolution per seconds so that is the word frequency then the other one is the maximum displacement from the mean position the maximum displacement from the main position. If a body move, now a body that move from A to B, this is the maximum distance it covers from A to B. It can't go beyond that. After getting to the maximum distance here, it cover the reverse in the reverse direction also the same distance since it cannot go beyond this distance that's the maximum possible displacement it can have then we call it what we call that what amplitude we call that amplitude we call that amplitude so let's go ahead to the next um, slide now from our definition, we can come up with this formula for the basic properties of a periodic motion. We can come up with the formula for the what? Different formula for each property of a periodic motion. The first one is a period. What do we mean by period? We say is a time taken for a body in a periodic motion to complete one cycle that is time over number of cycle so time taken to perform a cycle is period and it is measured in seconds the frequency is the number of cycle made in one seconds Number of circle made in one second. You can see number of oscillation in one second. You can see number of vibration in one second. So that is frequency. And it is measured in circle per seconds, or what we know as the what? The hertz. Now, amplitude. Amplitude is the maximum displacement. Maximum displacement. If I use the scenario of a simple pendulum that we are all familiar with, if I have a simple pendulum, if I displace the simple pendulum like this, now this is the maximum displacement because this is the maximum displacement I have given this simple pendulum. This is what we mean by our what A. So the pendulum will swing to, to this point and it will not stop here. It will swing to the other side and still cover the same what? The same distance in the reverse direction. And we still call that also the amplitude.
So now that we know what a periodic motion is, that is the motion that repeats itself after equal interval of time, and we know the properties of a periodic motion, which are the word frequency, period, and amplitude. Every periodic motion must have these three properties. It can have other properties in addition, but these three properties must be its property. So let's look at simple harmonic motion. Now, a simple harmonic motion, the first thing we need to know about a simple harmonic motion is that it is a periodic motion. It is a periodic motion. That is the motion that repeats itself at equal interval of time. That's the first, key, first keyword there. It's a periodic motion. Then, what is causing this periodic motion? It is caused by a restoring force. By a restoring force, which is directly proportional to the displacement from the main position of the body in motion. What do we mean by this? What do we mean by this? Let's take a note of this fourth important keyword, periodic motion, restoring force, displacement and the mean position okay let's take for example let's take for example let's take a scenario of a um, simple pendulum scenario of a simple pendulum now if we display the simple pendulum a bit to this direction now we discover that this simple pendulum will not stay here it is not possible for it to stay here it will want to come back to the this position it wants to come back to this position x equals to zero we call it the mean position yes how is it trying to come back to this position there is a force that is pushing it. There is a force that is taking it toward this direction. And that force is called what? Restoring force. Look at what happened. This force tends to bring it to the equilibrium position. But it ended up taking it beyond the equilibrium position because the body will swing like this to this direction. Immediately it is in this direction. The restoring force, we look at it now, I've overdone the job. It will try to take it back again to the equilibrium position. So the goal of the restoring force is to bring the simple pendulum bob back to the what? The main position. It's to bring it back to this position. So we now say a simple pendulum is a periodic motion because this motion repeats itself to and fro. Caused by what? A restoring force. It's the restoring force that is causing it to go to and fro. It was trying to bring it back to the equilibrium position, but it's taking it beyond it. And once it takes it beyond it, it tries to adjust it back and change the direction to the opposite direction and try to take it back to the main position again. You can call this point main position. You can also call it what? Equilibrium position. Now, the key, the third key point now is that the force, the, this restoring force is directly proportional to the what? To the displacement. Let's look at it. The more this force, the more the displacement. The more this force, the restoring force, the more the what? Displacement. If I decide, if I decide to take, if I decide to take this simple pendulum, if I take it up here and release it, the displacement will be more than the one what it was before. I see this. So it means that it's see, it see the same restore, it see the restoring force that is bringing it to the equilibrium position. But now the restoring force here gets bigger. As the restoring force here gets bigger, what happens to the displacement? The displacement also gets what? Bigger. But we write our restoring force to be proportional to the what? Negative of what? Displacement. Why? Good. Don't forget, when we cause the displacement, let me make use of an arrow 
to indicate that our displacement when we are starting the equilibrium when we are starting this simple harmonic motion this is the direction of our displacement x we are trying to displace x from the equilibrium position we are trying to dis displace it give it maximum displacement to this point good look at the restoring force restoring force is trying to bring it against our displacement we are trying to displace it this direction but restoring force is trying to do undo our what our activity is trying to bring it back so it means that this force is against the displacement the force is against the displacement and the more the more the displacement the more the force though they act in opposite direction they are doing different job displacement is in this direction the force is in this direction. that's in that's the reason why we have our what minus x here so let's go back to the slide that led us here so a periodic motion caused by a restoring force which is directly proportional to the displacement from the main position of the body now i have already explained that the restoring force is always towards the main position because it's trying to bring the body back to the equilibrium position it's trying to bring it back to the main position this simply means it is always against the displacement of the body and that is indicated with negative sign on the formula now if you look at it this is restoring force is proportional to what to displacement negative of displacement now restoring force if we, we can remove our proportionality sign and put a constant there so f is going to be minus kx but if you remember from newton's law of motion that we can write f as what m a if you can write f as m a it means that m a must be equals to minus kx and that's what we have here so if you divide both sides by m we are going to have a equals to minus k over m x and as we know we are the one that introduced this constant here so the, this is a constant the mass of the body is not changing it's also a what a constant so these two constants are kept together why it's only displacement that is changing and acceleration is also changing as a result of that so don't forget our definition of a simple harmonic motion we say it's a it's a periodic motion that is caused by a restoring force which is proportional to what negative of displacement by reducing the formula to this we can also define our simple harmonic motion in terms of what acceleration we can say it's a periodic motion in which the acceleration of the body is directly proportional to the word the negative of the word displacement and later we will find out that this formula a equals to minus k over m x is the same thing as this formula here that means our k over m is the same thing as what omega square the same thing as what omega square so we are going to find out why this is also true so we can now apart from simple pendulum because i've been using simple pendulum in my experiment in my explanation since apart from that we also have some bodies that are also in simple harmonic motion we have a lot of bodies so we just try to put five of that here the common one we have swinging pendulum, single, swinging simple pendulum. That's the one that was used in the explanation. We have oscillating mass at the end of a spring. We can have a spring system and on a frictionless surface, this is a, a block attached to a spring. If it displaces it a little, a little displacement, this thing will be going like this, this direction, then you come to this direction, then this direction again it will be going to and flow to and flow so that is simple harmony now 
The third one, oscillating loaded test tube in water. If we have, if we get a water in a beaker and we load a test tube with some lead shot so that it can keep it in place. If you dip it a bit, little displacement is very, very important. This is a liquid. If we pull, if we push it in a bit, then this test tube will oscillate in water to go up and down, up, up and down, up and down. So we also have motion of a liquid in a U2. If you have a liquid in a U2 and you just bend it a bit, if you bend it a bit, that is you bend it in such a way that the water level rises here and the water level decreases here. So when you balance it back, this system, the water in the water, U2, or the any liquid in the U2, we also perform simple harmonic motion. So uh, in real, um, we also have heartbeat. The heartbeat is approximately simple harmonic. And it must actually be the heartbeat of an LD person. The heartbeat of an LD person because the earth condition of man can affect the what? The oscillation of the heart. So the heartbeat of an LD person is approximately simple harmonic. So those are the common examples. So now, whenever we are talking about motions, we have parameters of motion. We have parameters of motion. Let me remind you of the Suvat equation. Let me remind you of the Suvat equation. Suvat equation. Now, you talk about distance and displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, acceleration and time. So it means that whenever we are talking about motion, we need all these parameters. We need all these parameters. So in simple harmonic motion, we represent our distance. Because in, we can represent distance with S, we can represent distance with X. They are, they, can, they are used interchangeably. They are used for displacement, they are used for distance. So in simple harmonic motion, I mean, we most time make use of what? X. So now, how do we know? Because if the beauty of this is that in the Suvat equation is that with the help of calculus is if we know displacement, it will be easy for us to know, to get displacement, to get velocity from displacement. It will be easy for us to get acceleration from that. And time is always there. So you can see our Suvat equation, if you represent this one, is almost complete. Our Suvat equation is almost complete. What is left here is now, u and v, they all start for, they both start for velocity. So, that's the beauty of calculus. Knowing displacement alone can fetch us velocity acceleration. So, let's see. This is the formula for displacement of a body in simple harmonic motion. How do we come about this formula? Let me take you through that so that you don't end up just cramming series of formula without knowing how we come about them. So for example, I'm going to take a simple pendulum. I'm using simple pendulum as my main example here, as my main simple harmonic body here. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. It's very, very important. Now, if you set up a system in simple harmonic motion, if you consider these three points, this is, you can see this one is plus A, when the body is at maximum displacement to the right. At equilibrium position, you can see that is zero. At the other reverse side, you can see this is minus A. So that means when it is going, it touches which point? A plus A, zero, minus A. Then when it is coming back from minus A, it goes to what? Zero then to what? Positive A. So these are all the values of displacement. Now, if you decide to divide displacement by A, everything here by A, that is, we divide our displacement by A, we are going to get a, plus A divided by A, we get plus 1. A, 0 divided by A, that is 0. Minus A divided by A, that is minus 1. 
is zero divided by a that is zero plus a divided by a that is plus one now we have series of plus one zero minus one zero plus one so we know that um sine and cosine are the ones that normally behave this way but we want to know which one behave exactly exactly in this pattern which one behave in this pattern let's look at it if i take cosine i want to take cosine cos theta if i take cosine if I, let me start from 90 degree if i take cos 90 that's going to be cos 90 that's going to be sorry let me start from zero if I take cos 0, let me take uh, the value of my theta to be 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. 360, that's 360. Cos 0 is 1, that's plus 1. Cos 90 is 0. Cos 180 is minus 1. Cos 270 is 0. Cos 360 is plus 1. You see that this same pattern, cosine have the same pattern as the pattern that we got here. So instead of writing plus 1, 0, minus 1, you can say it is simple as what? S, equal, S over A equals to what? Cos theta. Cos theta. And we know that this angular displacement, angular displacement, we can get, we can get uh, omega is theta over, angular displacement over time. So it means that theta equals to omega t. So instead of using theta, we can use omega t. That's going to be x, if you cross multiply, a cos omega t, cos omega t. And this is how we obtain this is how we got the displacement equation for a simple harmonic motion. This formula that we have here, that's how we come about it. We are not magicians. We have proof for everything that we are doing. Some textbook may write it this way and use this as x naught because this is our initial displacement that we gave to the world. Simple, the body in simple harmonic motion. Initially, before we start the simple harmonic motion, this is our displacement, x naught. And some some textbook will use it as a, while some will use it as x naught. It's still the same thing. Now, we also have textbook using it in this form. Why? They put this here. We call this one phase angle. They call, we call this one phi. It's called phase angle. Why do we need phase angle? It's as it's very very simple. Let um let me clarify on that why do we need that why do we need that let me get more space for myself okay good so now if i have a simple harmonic motion the one i drew there if i plot the graph of cosine from zero it's going to start from the maximum pass through zero get to the maximum down then go to the maximum again so we're going to have the graph like this that's good let's look at this particular point this line let's look at this line as movable movable so we want a situation whereby we can be able to we can be able to write the equation about our displacement at any point in time look at here this place now, from here to here, I can see that is what a phase angle. It's showing me I can decide that this is where my motion is starting from. That's what I mean. So if I decide, if I decide that this is where my motion is starting from, I must accommodate that in my equation. I must put something that can make me twist my equation and start at any point. Another student can say, no, this is where I want. This is where I am. This is where I start looking at my own motion. So we should the, the displacement equation should also be true for that and what does that mean what we are saying in essence is this 
It's like you have, you ask someone to be dancing, and instead of using a video coverage, you are using um you are snapping the person taking the picture of the person when you take the picture of the person at any point in time you are going to get the snapshot of the person if you compare all the snapshot of everyone it's not going to be the same because everyone is capturing the event of the dance at different points in time so what it means is that we are all going to get different results because we are looking at the motion at different points in time so our equation should be able to accommodate that that's why we include the face angle so we are going to have something like x cos to a cosine a cosine omega t plus phi which is the face angle now let's assume that a student starts his own motion here good Start his own motion here. You can see. Then this shift from here, from this maximum to this zero, is 90 degree. It's 90 degree. So if I start that now, at t equals to zero, at t equals to zero, that means the person starting his own motion here, at t equals to zero. And it's starting after, it's starting at what? A shift of what? 90 degree face angle. Far is 90 degree. What does it mean? If I put it in this equation, I'm going to get S equals to A cosine omega T. That's going to be 0 plus 90. And 0 plus 90 is 90 because 90 is 0. So this is going to be what? 0. You can see. It's representing this point for us. That the displacement at that point is 0. That is the body is at main position at that time. If you take a look at um, another, if we, because if you move further from here to here, the face angle is 180 degree. So if we go, if we substitute 180 degree into this, we are going to get minus A. And this shows minus A here. You can see. So the face angle make us to adjust the equation to any point of the motion so that's why we have the face angle there so let's now continue so when we have a simple harmonic motion we can plot our graph as this now the question is some students normally ask why are we representing with sine why are we representing with cosine yes we can represent the simple harmonic motion with sine we can represent with sine like x equals to a sine omega t plus phi we can do that the reason why we can represent with phi is because phi and cosine and the reason why we can represent with sine not phi sorry this is why we can represent with what sine function is because sine and cosine the look they, they they behave in a similar way at different points but we cannot use tan because tan is not continuous there are points where tan does not make any sense like when we find tan 90 now it's not going to make any sense to us so that's it let's look at um so now from um from our displacement we want to look at velocity and what acceleration now after we have established that our displacement x equals to a cos omega t let's keep it simple like that let's keep it simple now if i want to find if i want to find the velocity from calculus i will differentiate the displacement with time the exit t that's my velocity if i do that i'll write my constant out here i'll differentiate cosine when I differentiate cosine, I get minus sine, minus sine omega t. I already put the minus in front of this. I need to use, let me use another pen for that, another ink for that. Now, minus sine omega t. 
because this is a function of a function i'll differentiate the inside omega t then i get what omega so it means that the velocity is going to be minus a omega sine omega t if i continue if i continue if i continue and i differentiate the displacement again I, I, I do the second derivative i'm going to get the acceleration good if i differentiate this again my this is c minus a omega then if i differentiate this sign i get cosine omega t now if i differentiate the inside omega t i get what omega if i multiply the omega by this i get o minus a omega squared if i look at this very well I can rearrange this as minus omega squared A cos omega T. Now, if I look at A cos omega T, we already have something of such before. Can you see that? Look at it here. It's still our X. So, that's going to be minus omega square X. So, our acceleration is minus omega squared X. And remember that we got an acceleration earlier, which says that A is equal to minus K over M times X. So, this they are talking about the same thing. If they are talking about the same thing, it means that omega square here equals to what? K over M here. So, we are going to stop our class here as we have covered our objective under this topic we have no we have discussed what a periodic motion is we have discussed the properties we have talked about simple harmonic motion and we've talked about different bodies in simple harmonic motion and we have talked about the basic motion parameters for simple harmonic motion displacement velocity and acceleration and don't forget to like our page on instagram facebook global home tutors and if you need if you want us to make videos on some topics that you are finding challenges you can make your request we'll do that for you in a very short period of time thank you very much for being part of our lecture thank you